Hi, this is Randy Bates. I'm the defensive coordinator at Louisiana Tech University. The DVD you're preparing to watch is on defending the spread offenses. The object of this DVD is defending the spread offense with multiple fronts and coverages. Our goal for this section is, and first of all, I want to give you an overview of the entire package that we use to defend in the WAC, all the different looks that we get, and some of the concepts, hopefully, that you can use in the defenses that you run. These are all designed for one back sets and no back sets. So this is primarily the direction that we will go with this DVD. What we use at Louisiana Tech is a 3-4 that we like to think of as speed and deception. We have a lot of speed, we spread it out. In some ways we're probably playing our outside linebackers are almost nickel players athletically. Our, wig, our league dictates that as the fact that most teams are spread offenses. Hopefully you can take something away from what we do to help yourself. We're gonna focus more on the shell than the front four, front three. And so try to get into a little more depth as to the coverages and alignments of the back seven. In Louisiana Tech this past season, we saw 45 or more passes in four games. We saw 35 or more passes in six of the other games. So in 10 of the games, we saw 35 or more passes. I, say, I tell you this to give you an idea of why we've gone to this defense and some of the concepts that we're using. Six of the teams in the WAC scored over 60 points or more at least once last season. All 10 teams scored 50 or more points at least once. So it's a wide open league. A lot of points are scored. Our defensive philosophy, number one, don't give up the big play, rope-a-dope. We are a big get-a-turnover type team. We were sixth in the country this last season in turnovers. The most important thing when you're playing teams that are spread is that they get antsy. They want to make big plays. It's vital that you keep them in front of you and inside of you, and so our number one goal is not to give up big plays. We want to create turnovers. Like I said, we were six in the country. You have to work very hard on running to the football, and every once in a while, play will pop, and you've got to get there and hopefully punch the ball out or intercept. Number three, be it as multiple looking as possible, but play as few defense as possible. Most offenses, their scheme is to give you multiple looks, multiple motions, multiple shifts, and run very few running plays, even passes. Our philosophy on defense is to do the same thing to offenses to force them to minimize their offense a little bit. We want to give you as many multiple looks as we can and run as few defenses as we possibly can by shifting and motioning and, and uh, adjusting our line and linebackers. A in multiple looks is force offenses' philosophies to be reversed. Make them minimize what they're doing don't minimize what you're doing because what they are doing. Give them multiple fronts and coverages from overlapping techniques. We try to do as many coverages as we can by overlapping techniques. That way you don't have to teach as many techniques and you can run more coverages in a simpler fashion. Force offenses to adjust to multiple looks. Don't let offenses dictate to you. We are going to give you, we ran one zone blitz this year, 17 different ways. It's the same zone blitz, but it sure looks different for offenses. And what happens is we want to make that quarterback make checks at the line of scrimmage. We want the O-line calls at the line of scrimmage to be messed up. And we want and force the wide receivers and quarterbacks to adjust on the run, not pre-snap. 
defending the spread offense. Number one, pre-snap looks. Force the quarterback to read on the run, like we just said. We give them two shell looks. We like to be a two deep. We like to be two four techniques, a zero nose, and two nine techniques. Look like we're always in two deep. We will adjust by once in a while, making it look like we are in a man-free one, one deep or three deep type look. In both of those looks, you must be able to go from two deep to three deep to man-free. You must be able to go from man-free and shift back and play two deep. When you're stemming from your base, teach your players what to expect. If we are in a three deep look, most teams will try to hit the seams on you. When you're in a two deep look, they'll try to hit the flags on you or the deep outside routes. Also, if you're in a man free look, you're going to get a lot of speed option, a lot of fade. Teach your guys when you're giving looks what to expect from the quarterback as far as checks from those looks. It, make sure that the quarterbacks check, make sure the receivers run by their route what you're teaching. What route is the guy going to, if you're in too deep, adjust to? If you're in too deep, he's going to adjust to a fade. And then make sure that on run checks, you know where they're going to run, i.e. if you're in a man-free look, they're going to run the option. Number two, quarterback pre-snap tendencies. When do you bail? It's important that you, on Sunday or Monday or the first day that you watch tape, Somebody on your staff pays attention to the quarterback and the center. Try to figure out when the ball is going to be snapped. Many teams have a tendency that you can tell when the quarterback's ready to receive the ball. If you can find that tendency, you can start your zone blitzes, you can start all of your coverage adjustments and shifts and get there and not have to do it on the run where you could possibly be out of position. The number one thing you look at are, are the quarterback's hands out in a shotgun. If his hands are on his thigh boards until right before the snap, and then the quarterback puts his hands out when he's ready for the snap, that's a great tendency. Number two, does the quarterback lift his leg when he's ready to catch the ball? Number three, hand down for the center. Okay, do I put my hand down so the center can see it when I'm ready? On loud, in loud venues, a lot of teams will do that. And then D, last of all, does the center, do you put your hands under the center before you start your cadence, or do you make your checks and then put your hands under the center when the quarterback is under center? The next thing, tendencies to teach players. A, by formation, where are they throwing the ball? That's something that we all do. Make sure that your young men know we don't use a tendency less than 70%. If we have a tendency that's over 70%, we will use that and I will teach our players this is what you should expect 7 out of 10 times. Tendencies under that usually are not tendencies. Coverage zones. Where are they throwing? In this formation, are they throwing to the flat? Are they throwing down the middle of the field? Where are they throwing the football? By personnel group, where are they throwing it by formation? C, tendencies by backfield set. If it's one back, where are they throwing it? Is it gun weak when the back's away from the tight end? Are they throwing to specific spots? Down and distance hash and personnel tendencies. We all do that. Make sure, though, you're giving them the pertinent information, not too much information to digest. Give them the ones that are technically tendencies, 70 or more percent for us. E, alignments of the wide receivers are crucial. There are times that wide receivers will line up inside the numbers when the ball's on the hash. Most of the time they run outside routes. Are the wide receivers running inside routes when they're outside the numbers? Is there a tendency by where the ball is and where the wide receivers line up as to where they're going on their routes? F, teach hot route tendencies by blitz and formation. We are a big zone blitz defense. When we are zone blitz, usually teams have hot routes where they throw the ball or certain receivers the quarterback immediately looks to. If you can find those tendencies early in the game or hopefully you can find them before you play, it will help your players. 
teach run pass tendencies by depth and width of the back. Sometimes when it's one back and the quarterback's under center, it depends on how deep the back is as to whether it's run or pass. Most of the time he's at seven or eight yards on run. When it's pass, he's up closer because he's blocking. The same in shotgun. Is the back deeper than the quarterback sometimes? Is the back in front of the quarterback sometimes? Teach adjustments as part of your package. A, have calls to change supports. We have in our quarters coverage, in all of our coverages, a checklist of calls by what we're seeing from our offense. We can make one call and then change to another midstream during the game if we're getting certain tendencies. If we want to play some too deep against it, we have a way to do that. We have a way in our sky call where our safety comes down and our corner goes back where we can exchange that and have the corner stay up and the safety go back. These are all adjustments that can help you against spread offenses. B, teach these calls as concepts. You must teach why you're doing them, not just how to do them, so that your players understand in the middle of a game when you go to them, let's change from this one to that one why we're doing it. C, let the players learn the hard way, how to use the concepts on the field. Have a reason for the call. Well, why did you make that call? Well, was that the best call you could have made? Guided discovery is what I like to call it. Let them go out and screw it up in practice, come back and talk about it and say, well, you know, you probably could have done this one or that one instead. Let them learn by sometimes making mistakes and then telling you what they could have done. You won't be on the field during the game, so you won't be able to make those calls during the game to them. If you let them learn it by messing it up, they'll learn it quickly and they'll be able to adjust in the game. It also helps with communication in the press box if your secondary coach is in the press box talking to your secondary. Three deep calls. Here's an example at Louisiana Tech. When we are strong safety, we call our dog to the field. We have a sky call, which everybody has, where our strong safety drops down into the hook curl area. We also have what we call club, which means the corner is now the support player, and he is going to shuffle in, and the safety is now going over the top. We like to use that when we get a tight end wing type set. We also have a cloud call. Cloud call is where our corner is going to beat up number one, and our safety is going to bail out and go over the top and play the outside third. Just a good change up against bubble route type teams. We have the exact same calls for a free safety. Those three calls, star, club, and bench, are the same thing, but they are to our free safety side. So everybody knows when they hear one of those calls, everybody on that side of the field knows what the call is and who the support is. Formatting your game plan for the spread offense. Number one, personnel tendencies. What are their tendencies in 12, 11, 10? Do you have specific calls you want to make in those? Number two, down and distance tendencies. 75% or better. I've adjusted that to 70% for most teams because 75% is a high tendency. Probably 70% or better is a better way to look at it. Number three, weak O-line player to a single. You must single him out. Is there an offensive lineman who's weak? Do you want to blitz through him? Is that a place you want to zero blitz and let one guy go one-on-one? -on -one? Do you have a player who's better than their player? Make sure he's one-on-one -on -one with that player. Type quarterback playing. Is the quarterback a runner, a drop back? Is he an option guy? We like on teams that are good runners to just bull rush, stay in the quarterback's lane so he can't see the wide receivers. Or if a guy's 5'6 or 5'8, bull rush the the lineman instead of speed rush. Don't give him lanes to throw in. Tendencies by coverage look. Bait them. When we're in a three deep look, where do they throw it? Most teams want to throw to the flat when you're soft in the, on the hash or in the flat. In two deep, do they throw fades? Do they throw down the middle? In man three, do they throw fades? What are their tendencies by the looks that you give them? Number six, Specific player to stop. Do they have a special wide receiver, special tight end? Do you have to stop that specific guy? 
Is it number eight at wide receiver? Is it the quarterback? Have some ability to make some calls according to where that receiver is if you get into a game and he's hurting you. This is the way we break down our defense at Louisiana Tech. Number one, we go some, rush two, drop nine. In this, we use it approximately 1% of the time. In three eights, we're rushing three, dropping eight. We use that about 15% of the time. Our four sevens are our base defenses and coverages, three deep and quarters. We're rushing four, dropping seven. In our five sixes, more of our man blitzes, we are rushing five, dropping six. That's the zone blitz package for the most part. And then the six five is where it's more of a man blitz package where we're rushing six and then covering with man behind it. You can see the zone blitz package and our base coverages is about 60% of our package. And then we'll use some zero, six fives, 20%, and then short yardage goal line adds up to approximately 5%. Coverage philosophy. Our co coverage philosophy and the best way I believe to stop spread offenses is by using aggressive techniques with your secondary and backers. A, contact the receivers at many different levels. B, challenge every pass. Close to routes, cheat to the receivers. We want, when that ball gets there, we want to be challenging it. C, make wide receivers constantly adjust their routes. Don't let them know pre-snap what coverage you're in. Make them adjust on the run. Make the quarterback and wide receiver adjust without being able to talk to each other. Give the quarterback multiple pre-snap reads so he doesn't know what to check. Move on the run. Make them move after you move. Teach techniques that cross over to other coverages. Make sure that you have a, enough coverages, but make sure you don't have a technique for every coverage for every player. At this point, we're going to watch the levels of contact that we use. So at this point, we're going to go to the video and let's take a look at that. This is where we want to make contact with receivers at different levels. As you can see in this drawing, in this picture, the corners are shuffling out. One corner shuffling out, playing it deep. We're playing three deep at the top. Down here at the bottom, we're making contact. We call this a jam technique right at the line of scrimmage. So here we're making contact with the, re with the receiver on the line of scrimmage, but still playing a form of zone. Theoretically, we want to make contact with receivers as, at as many different levels as we possibly can. Okay, in this video, you can see the corner at the bottom off at five and then stepping back up. Now we're contacting about three yards off, just a little change up. Corner at the top is soft, even though it looks like he may be in a hard technique. Once again, object is keep changing it up on them. Different coverages determine different levels of contact. We try to do it at as many different levels as we can. You can see the corners here shuffling out. This is a slot call, so in this one we want to try to make contact. As you watch the corner at the bottom shuffle out, we're going to try to make contact here about eight yards. Just enough contact, maybe a little too soft, but we force the timing off. And it looks like he's well covered when the quarterback looks because we have contact with him. Corner at the top's not getting threatened, so he's just playing it soft, seeing one and two. You can see on one side we're making contact at eight, the other side we're not making contact at all. <clears throat> the next one, you can see the corner down here at the bottom. Bluffing contact at the line of scrimmage. Now working out over the top. Technically here we're trying to make contact at eight. You can see him down here at the bottom stick his arm out right there. 
guy adjusts, loses his speed, then we just throw him on our back hip and run with him. So there, even though we were making contact at eight, we were given the impression of making contact at the line of scrimmage. Just slows down the receiver's route as he comes off the line of scrimmage. At the, on the next one, if you watch the cornerback at the top, he started up in a press alignment, quarterback checks, we shuffle out like we're soft. Now we're turning into a two deep technique, making contact at approximately five yards. Just enough contact to knock him off his slant, create a bad throw, throw it behind him. Watch the corner at the bottom, corner at the top, corner at the bottom. We're both leveling off here. Corner at the top, <clears throat> playing too deep once again, leveling off approximately four to five yards. So in all of these, we're given different looks. This is the way we line up at Louisiana Tech. We are a field and boundary defense. We travel in posses. When I say a posse, we have five players that travel together. Our nose guard is over the center. We have five that go to the field and we have five that go to the boundary. To the boundary, we have our Sam, our Mike, our Free, and our boundary corner. To the field, we have our Buck, our Will, our Cat, who is, and, and our field corner. We like this because number one, those players to the field can all work together and they get used to playing with each other. To the boundary, those players get used to playing with each other also. The other nice thing is from a practice time standpoint, your players will get used to being able to play against plays that they run to the boundary and plays that they run to the field. Very few teams run the exact same plays to the field and the boundary. Our defense is predicated with our safety making the calls. Our cat safety will make a call, and that sets the field side and the boundary side before we get in the huddle. Once we break the huddle, our safeties will make calls according to what they have in front of them. A, controlled coverages by technique. Certain coverages that we have are controlled specifically by the call. That is the only thing that they use. B, though, we control the supports by those calls also. The second thing, sometimes our coverages are controlled by specific formations. These formations will change what calls we want to have. And then in the middle of a game, we can adjust those calls according to what we're seeing. Are we seeing a tight end and wide receiver and want to make one call versus that as opposed to when we see a tight end and a wide receiver or we see two wide receivers? The other thing is by personnel. We can have them make multiple calls according to who is where on the field. This is our 30 package. Our 30 package, we have a zero nose, we have two four techniques at defensive end and tackle, and then we have two outside backers who are nine techniques. Our will linebacker relates to number two, our Sam relates to number five, and then our buck and our Mike are in 20s over the guards. In our 30 package, that means that both of our outside backers and both, both of our inside backers are rushing, are dropping. When that is the case, if it is passed, our two defensive ends, even though they're two gapping, four techniques, they will become five techniques on pass. The nose guard has got a free rush down the middle. Our Will, our Buck, our Mike, our Sam, and our secondary will drop according to coverage call. You can also see, I just added in there, mutt and squeeze. These are twists that we will use with our three-man rush. We will be able to twist to the field. We will be able to twist to the boundary. Cloud. 30 cloud is a coverage that we like in our league especially because it gives us a hard corner to a tendency. 30 cloud is a call where we are rolling the coverage to the field. Our field corner is a cloud technique, which means he is jamming number one and playing the, the flat. Our will is relating to number two and playing the curl. Our buck is relating to number three and playing the hook. 
Our Mike is relating to four, and our Sam is playing the flat and number five. Our dog safety, our, our free safety, and our boundary corner are rolling to thirds, and we're playing three deep, five underneath. That is always a cloud, which means we're always going to the field. Here's a drawing with three by one. You can see it's a little bit more adjusted according to where the receivers are as we're semi-matching up the routes. However, it is the exact same coverage and everybody's relating to the same receiver. 30 cloud. 30 cloud is a solid coverage, which means we have no check with it. The drops are the same versus all personnel groups. We always protect the seams because it's three deep, so our will and our mic, they must assault verticals so we don't get four verticals and get somebody down the hash marks. The strength, the strength of the coverage is being physical on number one to the field. All wide receivers are matched up, so you're five under on five. The weakness is the boundary flat is soft because your, in, your outside backer has to drop out there and then play action, linebackers, can get caught in play action and not be able to get out in time. Your field corner is a jam technique. He's going to press out and level off at three to six. Your dog strong safety is going to roll to the outside third to the field, seeing one and two. Your free safety is going to go to the middle third, M3, seeing two, three, and four. And your boundary corner is going to shuffle, press out, and then he's going to go to the outside third, topping number four and number five. The next coverage we have is 30 bench. The front is still 30, so we're rushing three. Bench is the mirror image of cloud with the exception of rolling now to the boundary. As you can see, the boundary corner is now the hard defender into the boundary. Our Sam is now defending number four. Our Mike is defending three. Our Buck is defending two. And our Will is in the flat on number one. The secondary is now rotating the opposite direction. Versus three by one, it's almost a push coverage because we're pushing everybody to the field if the three receivers are to the field. We're still defending hard the boundary number five receiver. Coverage-wise, everybody remains the same. It's crucial that you always protect the seams. Your Sam and Buck must assault the vertical routes, and the rules are just flipped to cloud. 30 roll. 30 roll is primarily what we use at Louisiana Tech. It is a combination of bench or cloud. It is used as a check with me coverage. So when we call 30 roll, we are either playing bench or cloud. This is determined by the call either is made one of four different ways and this is a game plan check. Number one, we want to roll to the passing strength. If the passing strength is to the field, we'd be playing cloud. If the passing strength is to boundary, we'd be playing bench. You can go by a certain tendency. Third and ten, I want to go cloud. You can go by personnel group. You can go cloud or bench. Number three, by a specific wide receiver. We are always going to go cloud or bench to number eight. Number four. Backs alignments is the back to the boundary, we're going to go bench. Is the back to the field, we're going to go cloud. The free safety will always determine the call. The secondary will repeat to the backers. So as the coverage will be 30 roll in the huddle, as they come out of the huddle, we will either yell bench or cloud. And then as it says in the bottom, it is a solid coverage. So once we call it, we stay with it regardless of motions. Let's take a look at a little bit of 30 roll. In roll coverage, we're playing five under three deep. We can roll it either way. If we go to the top of the screen, it would be what we call bench, which is three deep with the corner hard. In this case, we're rolling to the bottom of the screen, which we call cloud, which is to our strong side, to the corner to the field. This is a jam technique by the corner at the top then he's going to play the flat on the numbers. The will linebacker is on the hash. He's going to relate to number two. The buck linebacker is on the left. At the bottom, he's going to relate to three. The Mike's got four. The Sam linebacker at the top's got five. And the secondary, the corner at the top, 
and the two safeties are rolling to the bottom of the screen here, playing three deep. You can do it as a tendency, you can do it in many different ways. In that case, it was third and 10 and third and 15, and we give them nine or 10. If you have a great tendency, you can teach your safeties to roll it either way. It doesn't matter where strength is. Tough to run it in the middle of the field, though, just from a standpoint of not knowing what tendency you're going to get. Here we're going to play bench, and so we're going to roll the corner down into the boundary down here, play three deep with the field corner being a third, rolling the safeties into the boundary again. Once again, five under, three deep. In this particular one, we checked and went from cloud to bench. You can certainly always leave it on, even with motions. Okay, here's a cloud at the top. You can see the corner at the top is a hard corner. Corner down here at the bottom shuff shuffling out, playing a third, and we're five under three deep. Pretty well separa separated. It was a good disguise at the start. You can't tell for sure what we're doing. <clears throat> and we end up getting a fumble for a touchdown, even though we're rushing three guys. The next coverage we have is what we call 30 buzz. 30 buzz is the same type principle as 30 cloud. The difference here is we are wanting to drop the safety down to the inside receiver. So the safety would now buzz down to the inside receiver number two. Our will now will push out to number one and the field corner will work to the outside third. So for the safety it's the same as a sky call or cover three. We're now pushing the will out, the buck, the mic, the Sam, the boundary corner, and the free safety are doing the exact same thing as they do in cloud. This is a great coverage if you're trying to defend the inside receiver who might be a great receiver. This is an exchange with the will, the backer, and the dog safety, as we've said. It is a buzz technique which is similar to sky. Bolt. Bolt is the exact same coverage to the boundary. The difference is now we are going to drop the free safety into number four. The Sam's going to go to number five. The boundary corner is going to work out. The Mike, the Buck, the Will, the dog safety, and the field corner are going to play the same coverage as bench. This is a check with me coverage. If we would go 30 drop, 30 drop, is either buzz or bolt. So if you, want, you don't know which way you want to go, you can call that 30 drop and tell the kids at the line of scrimmage to make a buzz or bolt call. Then we also have the ability to make a 30 check call. 30 check is cloud or bench or buzz or bolt according to where a certain specific receiver might be. The next coverage is Bandit. Bandit is a coverage that Tampa Bay came out with many years ago, and it is a two deep, four and a half under, but it's really almost three deep. You're taking your middle dropper and dropping him 18 to 20 yards, and he's carrying verticals down the middle of the field. We call our corners are the same as two deep. They're a squat. Our safeties, however, are going to get a little wider in their drop and then our buck linebacker is going to try to defend everything in the middle and they'll get, he'll get help from the safeties over the top. Your Will and your Sam are dropping in the curl off of four and two and they must anticipate short routes. Here it is versus three receivers. In three receivers we always open the deep dropper to the trip side first. If one, two, or three go vertical down the goalpost, the mic must carry him. 
if three removes himself and two removes himself, we will at times shut down the mic and play the digs. It depends on game plan. Even bandit, the techniques, corner, press out, level. It is a squat technique for us, which is a two deep technique. Safeties, you are a half plus technique. We play two deep where we try to stay two yards inside or outside the half. When we play a half plus, we go three to four yards outside the half, knowing that we have a middle runner. We must make sure we see one and two as we drop as safeties. The Will and the Sam, they drop in the curl eight to ten yards deep, anticipating throws, assaulting verticals. The Buck, who's our middle dropper, protect the middle of the field 18 yards deep, run with the verticals down the goalpost. The Mike is based on the front. We can always drop him shallow, make him a rat, look for screens. We can also rush him depending on the front. The strength of this coverage, you can contact receivers, the number one and number five receiver with your corners. Uh, you can look too deep and play a, almost three deep. The weakness is pass rush if you're only bringing three and deep digs are also a problem. Let's take a look at some bandit on tape. The next coverage is bandit. Bandit is a Tampa Bay two deep four and a half under. The middle linebacker is a middle runner, so we're playing squat with both corners. The safeties are a little wider than the average two deep. They're two plus yards outside. Our Mike linebacker is going to run the 12 to 15 yards, checking the trip side to the field first. Our, in, our outside linebacker and inside linebacker are looking for short routes in the curl. A way to look like two deep and almost be three deep. Tampa Bay brought this in four or five years ago. Crucial that your backers in the curl see screens and see short crossers. Here it is again, playing two deep. The inside backer will run to the deep hole. If, if number three goes vertical down the goal post, we're going to carry it. If he doesn't, you can see here the backer flip and open and look for verticals on the opposite side. Crucial that the underneath defenders anticipate the throws. Okay, we have three receivers down here. The inside backer ought to open to the trips. The two guys on the hash, the backers on the hash are shorter droppers. You can see the inside backer carrying number three vertical. And in this case, we're spying an extra D lineman looking for a screen. But we're playing two deep, almost three deep. Difference is we're funneling the wide receivers, the widest wide receivers, one and five. You can watch the inside backer here turn and run with the tight end. Okay, it's three by one again. We should open to the field to trips. Carry any vertical down the middle of the field. Three goes inside. He's still going for width looking to protect the goal post. Anticipate the throw, just got to get it out. The next coverage we have is 30, cover two rat. Cover two for us is our true two deep, five under. The rat just tells our inside linebacker that you are a shallow dropper and game plan wise, we may spy him, we may look for screens. In other games, we may not call rat and he would be the fourth rusher. The corners, your technique is press out, square up, and run a squat technique, too deep. You can play this also from press, just as a change up, but we like to control that in the press box. The safeties are a true half technique. You're a hash, hash dropper. 
two yards inside or outside the hash. Top all receivers, make sure you're five to ten yards deeper than the deepest receiver. The Will and the Sam, you are a curl dropper. We like to carry number two and number four vertical in this, in this coverage. So if two goes vertical, our Will and our Sam linebacker are going to carry them vertical. Our buck, our buck is a hook player, middle dropper, opening to number three, and that is a 10 to 12 yard drop. And like I said, the Mike linebacker could be a rat technique, or you can also rush him. The next coverage we're going to look at is 50, cover three, which is our base coverage. 50, we're bringing our will linebacker from the field, our field outside linebacker. We're dropping the strong safety, our dog, down to the curl and we're playing four under three deep. Cover three. Cover three for us. We have the dog safety and we are in a two deep shell. It is a sky call. Sky meaning assault number two vertical as you drop down to eight to ten yards deep protecting the seam. The free safety is going to work to the middle third. The corners are going to work to the outside third. We also have options for the dog according to what he sees in front of us. Sky is the one we've talked about. He can also run a club call versus a tight end wing. He can also run a cloud call, which is a game plan. Versus three by one. We don't change. We relate to the same receivers. The dog safety is relating to number two in a sky, protecting the scene. The buck is relating to three. The mic is relating to four. And the Sam is still relating to five. We are basically in three deep defending four receivers and giving up the field flat. A great adjustment versus teams that like to throw the ball to the field. At times we will call three Viking. Viking is a check where we like to versus three receivers to the field push to the field. We are overloading to the field. Packer is called by the safety on the, on the field which tells us we are going to drop one receiver wider than we would normally drop in 3D. Our, cat, our dog safety will drop two to one, trying to reroute two if he's vertical and then push to the flat. Our buck will now push to number two. Our Mike will now push strong to number three. Our Sam linebacker will drop to number four. If number four goes away, he now is recounting and looking for a receiver coming to him from the far side. Our boundary corner is now a mod technique. So anything over eight yards, man over deep, he will play in a man technique inside leverage. Anything under eight yards, he will play in normal thirds. Our free safety is working to the middle third. You can also in this make a cloud call. A cloud call is something that we saw before in our cloud coverage. Cloud meaning the corner now is going to play number one from the line of scrimmage and the safety instead of dropping down to two and going to one will just work over the top to the third. Our next coverage, our next defense in coverage is 70 cover four and cover six and we also use cover two. In this defense we are bringing our outside linebacker from the boundary, our Sam linebacker. Our Will linebacker is a dropper in the curl and then depending on which coverage we're in, we're either in cover four, some form of quarters, cover six, which is quarter, quarter, half, and then cover two, which is obviously uh, two deep. Cover four. Cover four is an aggressive quarters technique. On open receivers, we play what we call a slot call. In this particular drawing, we have the Mike and the Will linebacker dropping inside of number two and number four. The buck is dropping over number three at eight to ten. And then our corners are both on a read and a slot call of the number two and number four receiver, and so are the safeties. The rules for the safety in cover four as far as calls. With two open receivers in cover four, we are going to play a slot call. Versus a tight end and wide receiver, we are going to play a read call. And a spy call for our free safety because you can't play a read call to the side where the outside backer is rushing. A mod technique for the corners. Anytime we have a read or a spy, the corners are basically playing man over the top. 
three wide receivers away, we are playing a poach. Poach meaning we're tying the free safety to the strong side of number on number three. A single tight end, wing, we will play a kick call. A kick call is a two deep concept. Queen, queen is a situation where with the width of number one being really wide and number two, the corner will play man on number, number one and we will double team number two. This is good when you get really, really separated splits between number one and number two. Let's take a little look at cover four on video. Okay, this is cover four. Cover four is our quarters coverage. Cover four, when we play quarters, we play slot and read and spy. It's great versus four wide receivers because you can defend four verticals very well. To the bottom, we'd be playing a slot call. To the top, we'd be playing a slot call. As you can see, we're basically with the corners and the safeties, reading the inside receiver and playing the, the vertical of the receiver in front of us. Midpointing the smash route at the top of the screen, carrying the vertical at the bottom. So we'd be playing slot. So eight's got the vertical of one. Corner gets a sit down in front of him, so he's midpointing, looking for the flag route, being able to break under it, safety would break over it. Here's another good look at a slot call. We're at 10 yards with the safeties approximately, taking the vertical of two. Corners are taking the vertical of one. We want to contact as the corner as the bottom did here at eight yards. Try to knock him off course. <clears throat> Here's an example of a tight end flanker down here at the bottom. We'd still play a slot call at the top. At the bottom, we'd play a spy call. Spy being that the outside backer down here is coming off the edge, so the safety plays the tight end vertical, and if they would ever run a boot, the tight end goes to the flat down here, he'd have to play it. The corner at the bottom is a mod technique, which means man over deep. He would carry the number five receiver down here on any vertical over eight yards. It's a great job by our corner of midpointing the flag route, the smash, He's over the top of number one, be able to play under number two on the smash. Okay, at the top of the screen, we're playing a slot call again. At the bottom, we'd play a read because that's a tight end. Tight end's vertical, safety takes him. So in both cases here, it really becomes the same coverage. Even though at the bottom of the screen here, the, the corner technically has got number one regard, or number five regardless other than short routes. So we're carrying all four verticals, which is great against spread teams. The reason we call it a spy for number nine here is if that tight end would block, nine becomes a support player and the corner knows he's got no help. Does a great job of keeping body position on the wide receiver. Okay, here's one where we're playing a read call on the left, playing a spy call on the right. Both corners are basically Man, motto, mod technique, which is man over deep. If number one or five would go hard up inside, they'd let them go and look for work. The safeties, as you'll see in the end zone copy, are bouncing, keying number the two tight ends, the motion guy being one tight end. When they block, 
we replace off of our outside backers outside in. In the next, in the next picture, we have three by one. Here we'll be playing poach. Poach is a slot call to the bottom of the screen on one and two with the will, the corner, and the safety. The backside safety at the top of the screen is going to play number three vertical. If three is not vertical, he's going to look back and help the corner into the boundary. The corner into the boundary is a mod technique, which is man over deep. Anything over 12, he's playing him in a man technique. <clears throat> Game plan wise, if we don't get a vertical, by number three in a poach call, we normally will go back and look to help on the wide receiver to the top of the screen. You can see number nine as he bails out, quarterback looks to the boundary, so he looks to the boundary, knowing he's got time to see number three vertical to the field. Here's another example of a poach call. Corner at the top's got the tight end man. We're bluffing it and we're bailing out. You can see our will linebacker, our outside backer on number three pushing out. He's in the curl of two. Corner and safety are on a read of one and two in a slot call. The backside safety is going to play three vertical. Corner is just a free player. You can also add that corner in as an extra blitzer if you feel that would help. Here's another example of a poach call. Quarterback looks weak, safety. Number four turns, once three's not vertical, three stops right there, he turns and doubles. Turns and helps the corner. You can watch the corner do a great job of trying to contact at approximately eight yards, keeping up field leverage. Force him to run around you, run over you. Make him throw it in front of you and bring him down. Okay, here's three by two. Anytime you get an empty set, we will play a slot call at the top. At the bottom of the screen, though, we can't play a poach to trips because we don't have the safety at the top involved at the bottom. So what we have to do is make a top call. Puts the corner at the bottom on number one, man-to-man. -man. Now we're playing an inside-outside leverage which are with our outside backer and our inside backer on number two and number three, and the safety is down the middle topping them because at the top of the screen, the safety, the corner, and the backer are involved with the two receivers at the top of the screen. There you can see at the top of the screen, we're three on two. Down here at the bottom of the screen, we're three on two with the two inside receivers, and we're just playing man-to-man -man on the outside receiver. Here comes number three inside. He gets inside of us, but we've forced him to run around us and make contact with him when the ball's thrown. Okay, here's another one where we go top at the top of the screen, playing a slot call at the bottom of the screen. Inside, outside, over the top on the number two and number three receivers at the top of the screen, playing man on number one at the top. If number three goes inside hard, we let him go back to the backside backer. Okay, here's an empty set again. Playing the top again. You can watch the backer. 34 is playing inside of three. 58 is playing inside of four. Since it's empty, we're obviously cheated a little wider. Here's a, a slot call on a spy call. So the outside backer at the bottom is playing inside a two. 
or inside and over the top. And then on the, at the top of the screen, we're playing a spy call. Watch the safety bounce, reading the tight end. Tight end blocks and releases late. We assume the backer can get there, so the safety is looking to help on number one. Okay, here's three by one, playing a poach call. You can see the safety down here at the bottom will carry the vertical of three. Safety at the top is carrying the vertical of two. Corner is carrying the top of number one. And the corner at the bottom here is playing the tight end. Here's another slot call on both sides. We're inside, outside, and over the top just about. We're a little softer in this game with our corners. Okay, here's a star formation. Once again, we're playing a top call. I'm sorry, we're playing a poach call. This is cover four. What we've done here is just back the corner off. He's playing man on number five down here at the bottom. And we're playing a poach at the top. So the safety is now not on the hash. He's in the middle of the field, cheating to that. They're playing a slot call at the top, or a top call at the top. So our outside linebacker is actually outside of number two. So corner at the top's got one. The outside backer at the top's outside and has number two. The inside backer down here at the bottom is inside of three. And we actually have two safeties over the top. Here's another top call at the top, slot call at the bottom. Okay, here's three by one. We're playing a poach call down here at the bottom. Once again, we're teaching that safety at the top of the screen, game plan wise. In this case, the game plan was to look at the eyes, corner and safety are playing the verticals of one and two. Corner hurts himself by floating a little bit outside, but he pretty much stays on top of the route. Cover six. Cover six is a quarter, quarter, half concept. Cover six is a scenario where on the front side to the dog safety, we are playing the exact same rules as we do in cover four. Our wheel linebacker still dropping to two, Buck still dropping to three, Mike still dropping to four. What we're changing up is we're playing a squat two deep concept to the boundary side. The front side of the coverage played the same rules. The dog has the same rules with open receivers and tight end receivers. The free safety side, however, will always play a squat call. We do not play poach call versus in cover six where we tie versus three receivers to the field. Corner is a squat technique, hard corner into the boundary. The free safety is a half technique, two yards inside or outside of the hash, and the Mike linebacker to the boundary is a curl dropper on number four. Let's take a look at cover six on videotape. Cover six is next. Cover six is our quarter, quarter, half coverage. To the front side of the, uh, the bottom of the screen, it's just cover four. So we would play a read call at the bottom. Corner's got one. Safety's reading the tight end. If he blocks, he'll replace on the run. At the top of the screen, we're playing two deep. So the corner will shuffle out, square up, funnel it. Safety will be a two deep over the top. And all of these we're bringing the boundary outside linebacker, the field outside linebacker is a curl dropper. Okay, here's th three by one. With three by one, you cannot play a poach call in cover six because in cover six you lose your backside safety because he's playing a half technique. So in this scenario, we would go in cover six 
we'd go to a top call and the will linebacker will play outside of number two. He's shuffling out here. Corner's got number one man. And you can see a good squat technique at the top. Level off, contact, safety over the top. Just a good change up. Especially teams that like to go three by one and throw back to their best receiver back to the back side. Gives you a chance to almost double team him. Okay, in this case, we're playing a squat call down here at the bottom. We're too deep at the bottom. We're playing a slot call at the top. What we do if we get boot, we roll it in the three deep. Corner ought to be a little shallower. He doesn't break off quite as quick as we'd like. Safety ought to work over the top to number one. Backside safety go to middle third. Backside corner rotate into the backside third. Can watch the reaction. Safety will go from being a half technique to working in the thirds. Same with the backside corner. Another squat call at the top. We're playing too deep. Playing a poach call or playing a uh, top call down here at the bottom. Again, they're trying to hit back to number five, back into the boundary one on one. You're technically double teaming them when you go too deep. Just change up your too deep level as to where you contact. Okay, here's a top call again. You can see the will outside of number two. We're leveling off down here at the bottom. Playing too deep. You can see the safety in the corner playing. Corner's playing one at the top man. Safety's carrying the vertical. Got to bring him down. Don't give him time to scramble. Once again, squat call at the top, slot call at the bottom. Good view here at the bottom in a slot call. If number two goes to the flat, corner breaks off on the flat route, safety goes to number one. The top of the screen, we're in our two deep. Will linebackers in the curl to the field. Mike and Buck are hooked to curl to their side. The next thing we're going to look at is our package for even. This is our way of going to 4-3. When we go to 4-3, we take our Mike linebacker, who is our inside linebacker to the boundary, who is our larger, more physical linebacker, and we put him up as the fourth defensive lineman. The beauty of this defense is we have to substitute nobody, and nobody should be able to know we're going to a four-down line set. The other thing that's nice about this coverage is that from a athletic standpoint, our Will and our Sam are our better athletes, usually better in coverage. This gives you an opportunity to drop both along with your Buck, who is also your better athletic linebacker. It also gives you the ability to run twist with your front four. Here is even versus two by two, versus three by one, and then versus two backs. It is virtually the exact same thing as every 4-3 defense. The biggest exception for us is we are truly two-gapping our defensive linemen and we are head-up techniques in even. Here are some of the twists that we use. We can put the mic up on the line and then drop him and let him play a rat, which brings our defensive linemen back to our 30 look. We can run a choice. A choice is where our nose guard and tackle are going to read the center. If the center turns to me, I go around, if the center turns away, I hit the A-gap. We also have pick, we also have poke. Pick and poke are to the field where the end goes first in one and the nose goes second behind, and then the opposite where the nose goes first and the end goes behind. Our odd package. Our odd package is where we shade our two inside bodies to a three and a one to the tight end. We're now a nine to the tight end, a three to the tight end, a 
a 1 to the split end and a 6 to the split end. For the shell, it is exactly the same coverage. It is now just a little better run defense in situations where you have a higher percentage run, but you still want to play good coverage. Even lanes. Even lanes is when we go to our even package. However, we are going to play our quarters coverage. The secondary is playing the exact same rules as we play in cover four. Our will and our buck are doing the exact same thing as they do in cover four. All we're virtually doing is changing and not bringing our Sam linebacker. We're dropping our Sam and bringing our Mike linebacker. These are coverage. This is a coverage that I like to use in past situations. You can get better twists in even. You can get better men dropping athletically. And it's easier to adjust to all the motions and all the different sets from a 3-4, from a 4-3. Secondary wise, the beauty of this is you can overlap coverages for your secondary. It is a, a little bit more of a cautious man technique than it is in cover four because we use it in longer yardage situations. So we teach our secondary to know where the down and distance is in certain situations. If we, however, get three by one, as we do in cover four, we play poach call backside, which ties our safety into the front side number three we would still play a slot call on number one and number two, and then our boundary corner will tie up number five to the poach side, which is a single receiver side. Three by one poach calls, also a tight end set, play a slot, not a read. We rarely play a read call in these situations where we're reading a tight end just because it's normally a pass scenario. The Sam and the Will drop to the curl of number two and number four. We usually drop more of a 12 yard drop in our lanes and our mic is going to drop off number three 12 yards deep. Make them throw it in front of you. Let's take a look at a couple snaps of cover of lanes coverage. Okay this is lanes coverage. Lanes coverage is the same as the a form of cover four. What we've done is we've changed it up when we bring our mic linebacker in this case in our even package we bring one of our inside backers, drop both of our outside backers who are sometimes better athletes. We call that lanes. It's the exact same techniques as cover four. We play a slot to two open receivers. We play read and spy to tight end wideouts, and we play poach. So it's the same coverage. As you can see here, we're playing a slot call, trying to contact with the field corner at eight. Safety's playing the vertical at two. Same scenario at the top of the screen. Great versus four verticals. Gives you a chance. Play a little 4-3. You can run this coverage regardless of what kind of front you're in. We just change the names so that they know who's dropping and who's rushing. Here's another lanes. Now we have both outside linebackers dropping in into the curls and our, Mike, our buck linebacker. Our Mike is the fourth rusher. You can see we're just taking the verticals four on four. Don't let them get behind you. Keep your body between the goal line and the wide receiver. Force him to run over your feet. A great view of having great positioning. Okay, we're in lanes again. Trying to reroute the verticals with the outside backers. You can see the corner down here at the bottom getting outrun. He's getting outrun to the boundary. Open your hips, turn and run with him. Turns into man. Same thing at the top. Watch the safeties turn and open, covering the receiver's vertical. Another slot call. Great long yardage coverage. You can see the backers relating to their receivers three and four to the right.
turn and run to the football. Slot call once again, the corner at the bottom gets an outside release, turn it into man. Always got to look for the crosser as a will linebacker as you reroute number two. Can be a large play if they catch this one and our outside linebacker is not seeing it. Our next coverage is special. Special is a man zone concept. We are going to bracket two open receivers and play inside outside. It should look the same from an alignment standpoint as all our other coverages. We are now going to use our outside linebackers as almost nickel DBs. In two open receivers we make a tag call. A tag call means that the corner and the outside linebacker, Sam or Will, and the safety are three on two. The safety is inside between the two receivers. The corner is outside of number one or five. The safety is inside of number two or four. They are going to pick up the routes as they go. If we get three by one, on the front side, we are going to stay with a form of tag inside outside. However, we are now going to bracket two and three. So our wheel linebacker will now go outside of number two. Our buck will be inside of number three. The bracket now is between two and three. The, the safety will do it the exact same way, but now on two or three. He will play the top, the two receivers if they're shallow. If we get a double in or double out, he will drive the, first, the second route inside or out as the defensive outside backer or inside backer will play the first one. Our field corner, our field corner will play number one in a press man technique. Our boundary corner and our free safety. On the single receiver side, we play what we call king. King is a hard man tempo with our corner. Our safety is in a double mode, backpedaling out, reading the quarterback's eyes. As he comes back, if that quarterback looks to the receiver that's being doubled, we are going to go double him right now. If that quarterback looks away, we're going to continue going straight back, hopefully being able to help to the strong side. Here is the way we use tag. As you can see, if two receivers go vertical, we're staying outside, inside, and down the middle. If the inside receiver goes to the flat, the corner will come off on it. The safety will slide to the outside, and we're still trying to stay inside, outside. Once they determine and they run an inside or outside route, that, in this case the corner in the middle drawing, will jump that route and then the safety and the will must jump the vertical. The next drawing, the outside receiver is going inside. So the will sees that, he's bracketing it, so he'll take the outside receiver coming in. The safety will slide inside of the number two receiver and play him inside and vertical and the corner will slide in and play the vertical of number two. In the next drawing, down at the bottom, you're going to see a smash. The corner, anytime number one sits, the corner's got him man because the safety should be outside of number two and the wheel should be inside so you have a double on the deep route. The next drawing is a double in. The wheel would take the first inside route. The safety being inside of number one will drive the outside route and the corner will work over the top and play anything that is missed. In the next drawing you get a double out, the corner's taking the first outside, the safety would take number two outside, and the will will just bracket and look for work from inside out. So the will's rules, you have the first inside, and it would be the same for the Sam with a tag technique call. The corner has the first outside of number one and two. The safety, Top both, double in, double out, you have it, number two. Stay between the two receivers. A solly call, if we get very, very wide splits, we'll, tell, we'll say solly, which will lock the corner on number one, and we're literally doubling number two. A king, a king call and a trio call. A king and a trio call means we have three receivers to one side, one receiver to the other side. In this case, trio 
we have three. So our will linebacker will now go outside. Our buck will be inside a three. Our corner will lock up number one. And then the safety will do the exact same thing as tagged. However, now we're dealing with number three and number four receiver. The will has the first outside route and the buck has the first inside route of two and three. Corners locking man, safety's playing the same tag technique. On the king side, the safety will backpedal out looking at the quarterback. The corner is going to press and attack number one, playing a heavy technique, knowing he's going to get help from the safety if the quarterback looks that way. He will never leave the number five receiver or number one. Corner, the technique we use is a jam, which means we're trying to cross the line of scrimmage, contact him in the chest, and then run with him. And then the safety is a double technique reading the quarterback's eyes. Let's take a look now at some special video. Special is our next coverage. Special is a coverage that is a concept of too deep, but it is a man tempo. Here in special, we would be playing a tag call at the top, which means the outside backer is inside a one and two, the corner is outside a one and two, and the safety is keying one and two. Here we get two verticals. We're assuming our corner can carry number one, so the safety helps the backer on number two at the top. At the bottom, it's virtually the same thing. Safeties are helping both sides. Great job by the corner at the top of keeping leverage on top of the receiver on the vertical. The underneath defenders, the backers are playing inside and then the inside linebacker in two by two is playing the back in a man-to-man -man tempo. Okay, so we would be in a tag call again down here, which we're inside, outside, and over the top. Now when we get trips, when they motion here, we go to a trio call. What it's doing is putting our outside linebacker outside of two and three. So now we're bracketing two and three with those two guys. The safety's coming in and topping those two basically in a little more of a man tempo. Corner's playing one man to man. Corner at the top is playing one man to man. What we are playing at the top of the screen is what we call king. King means the corner is playing a hard technique, man-to-man -man on number one. The safety is in a read technique on the quarterback. If the quarterback's looking back to number five at the top of the screen, we're doubling him. If the quarterback looks away, the safety will sink, look for work, and hopefully be able to help to the front side. And you can see now our Sam linebacker, 37, goes from being inside of 84 to covering 17 man-to-man. -man. Now 34, who's pointing there, is inside of the tight end and the number two receiver. Okay, here's a trio call again. Trio inside, outside of number two and three, man on number one. The outside backer on the hash has got the back. The corner's got the wide out down here at the bottom with help from the safety. So this is a king call at the bottom. It's a trio call at the top. So you can see they switch two and three. We switch with it. Corner's playing man on number one. Safety's over the top. Safety over here is technically playing. He's helping on the corner when needed. Trio again. Inside, outside. Now they go back in motion. We'd go back to tag. Now we go back to trio again. So the outside backer here gets the outside route. He jumps it. The safety ought to jump the vertical along with the inside backer. Corners pressing both their guys and playing a man. Safety at the top is doubling number one at the top. However, quarterback looks away. 
No reason to go dumble somebody that's not getting the ball. Look to help whoever needs help. Thirty-seven has got the back. Most of the time, we run this in some form of even, which is our three, our four-three package. Okay, here's a trio down here at the bottom, inside, outside, over the top. Great job by the safety. If you get two ins or two outs, safety's got to drive it. You can see the safety driving number three down here at the bottom. Force an outside route and a short gain. Playing a king at the top because it's three by one. Technically, we're doubling at the top. Okay, here is a king call again at the bottom. This time in a king call, I'm sorry, and this time at the top we're playing a tag. At the bottom we're playing king. King in this case means that we're man-to-man -man on the tight end because we have a tight end backside. Corner's got number one at the bottom with safety help over the top for both guys into the boundary. So anytime we have a single wide receiver, it's always king. If we have a wide receiver and a tight end, it'd be king. And the outside backer would obviously have number four man-to-man. -man. There's a perfect double right there. At the bottom, he's attacking him, playing him man. Safety's going to help. The other thing you can do here is play trio with this set because you have a wide out to the right out there. Put 42 outside, 32 inside and play a combo on the back and the tight end. Here we just chose to play it as a lock type situation. Here's a trio again, three by one, king down here at the bottom. It's a great jam technique here at the bottom. We're just playing him, jamming him. Safety's working to help over the top. Playing man at the top and playing trio with two and three. Man on number one at the top. Watch the safety back out, seeing the quarterback's eyes, turn and go get him. Okay, it's three by one again. We're in trio. So the outside backer down here will end up outside of number two. So the outside backer will take that flare. The inside backer will take the tight end with the safety helping. Corner's got one man-to-man. -man. Corner at the top's got five man-to-man -man with help from the safety. The backer on the right has got the back man-to-man. -man. Here's another trio, three by one. The outside backer at the bottom has got the back. The inside backer and outside backer at the top are playing two and three with press on one. Safety here is leaning strong. We're hoping to force a throw to the boundary where we're doubling him. This is a great job by the safety with two inside receiver, with two ends. Safety breaks on the second end. 32's got the first end. The safety, because the outside backer's outside of number two, has to take the inside routes, short routes, of number two. The last thing we want to look at is what we call 30 bob. 30 bob is a technique where we're telling our defensive end, defensive tackle, you're going to five techniques, and we are truly going to four down linemen. We're doing it by bringing an inside linebacker. The coverages are the exact same thing as when we go even. 30 Mike. 30 Mike is when we bring the Mike linebacker. In the previous one, 30 Bob, we brought the Buck linebacker. One of the two inside backers is the fourth rusher, and then we are running our really 4-3 coverages.
we like to play versus the option, the overhang techniques. The overhanging techniques, meaning that we have an extra defender outside of the defensive tackle. The option in the spread offense where they motion a guy back, the Florida-Utah offense, it's nice to have a defensive tackle on the dive and then two players to play the quarterback to the pitch. Key the quarterback face or back. The direction the quarterback faces is the direction the option is going. The nice thing with the 3-4 is you have the ability with four linebackers to key it this way. I'm not sure it's not too difficult with 4-3, but it is an easy technique, which we'll see on tape here in a minute, out of the 3-4. Mix in hard corners, play some two deep, play some bandit versus the spread offense option. The safeties must key through number two or number three strong to make sure that it is pass or run. Quarter, quarterbacks sometimes will take two steps on the option, bail out and throw the ball. The key is the two wide receivers. If they're cracking, you must play the run but you must make sure that the wide receivers block before you replace. Constant pre-snap look. Give them a balanced, constant look so the quarterback does not know which way to run the op option. If you're a zero, two fours, two nines, two deep shell, there is no overload to one side or the other. Blitz the edges. Force the quarterback to get hit. Make him make a decision quickly Quarterbacks most of the time don't like to get hit, attack them at times, go hit them, make them pitch, hope for a bad pitch. Let's take a look now at some of our option overhang that we've done at Louisiana Tech. This is the overhang when we talk about playing the option, the thing we like to do with the 3-4, especially with this new shotgun option is the fact that we can have two overhang players to each side. If you watch on the option, the backers are stepping to the right here. So what ends up happening to the right is we have two players outside of the tackle to play quarterback and pitch, the inside backer and the outside backer. Let's watch it from behind. You'll watch 34 and 58 step to the quarterback which will give us an overhang as we're playing zero techniques up front. So 58 ought to play the dive along with the D-line. 38 is going to stack it, play the quarterback, and then our outside backer out of the picture will play the pitch. Number eight and four. Here's another one against that option. See once again we have another overhang player opposite to the quarter to the option side. This time they arc the tackle to get the backer, which leaves us an extra player in the tackle. And we still have an overhang player unblocked. Here's another one. This time though it's just on the goal line. Same thing, we got a stack backer still out here. Just got an extra player to the option side. It's the beauty of the 3 4. The linemen are taking the D line to the left. Gives us 42. And 58 can easily pop back outside, play the next thread along with 9. Here's another one, we're bringing the outside backer from the left. Guess right, but we also have an extra player in the inside backer skating this direction also. Once that wide receiver cracks, our safety in our quarters coverage now has pitch. I'd like to thank Coach's Choice for the opportunity to do these videos. I'd like to thank the people who have bought them. Hopefully it helps you to learn more about what we've done and hopefully something that you've gotten out of this, these DVDs will help you in the future. I'd also like to thank our staff for doing a fine job, and that's the reason I was able to do these videos. Thank you.